Good morning, CPC. Welcome to worship on this Thanksgiving weekend and the first Sunday in Advent. My name is David Anderson, a member of CPC. I am serving as the pulpit supply today as Brett has traveled to Illinois to spend the Thanksgiving weekend with family. We appreciate the participation of everyone in our worship service this morning as we end one celebratory weekend and begin a time of preparation. Without calendars, there is no telling how disorganized our lives would be. They add the structures that bind together day-to-day -to -day living. The church has created calendars to guide and teach us in the mysteries of our faith. Advent has been part of the Christian calendars for centuries. Not as a holiday or feast, but as a time of preparation. Advent, beginning today, offers us time to prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus on Christmas Day. A reading from Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. And a second reading from Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. For this reason I kneel before God, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that of our God's glorious riches, God may strengthen you with power through God's spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. O oh, Holy Spirit, as the season of Advent commences today, help us to set aside time each day to prepare for the coming of Emmanuel. God with us. Ready our hearts for Christ's arrival. Amen.
listen to our call to worship this morning. Come, people of faith, come join your hearts in worship. We hear the invitation and hunger to join in the feast. God is faithful and calls us into the loving presence of Jesus, who is the Christ. We come to join with those who celebrate, watch, and wait. Amen. two scripture readings this morning. One from the Gospel of Mark is found in chapter 4, verses 26 through 30, and one from the prophet Isaiah found in chapter 9, verses 2 through 4. Listen to God's word, which is for all of God's people. From the Gospel of Mark. Here is another story illustrating what the kingdom of God is like. A farmer sowed his field and went away, and as the days went by, the seeds grew and grew without his help, for the soil made the seeds grow. First a leaf blade pushed through, and later the wheat heads formed, and finally the grains ripened, and then the farmer came at once with his sickle and harvested it. Jesus asked, how can I describe the kingdom of God? What story shall I use to illustrate it? And then from the book of Isaiah, the people who walk in darkness shall see a great light, a light that will shine on all those who live in the land of the shadow of death. For Israel will again be great, filled with joy like that of the reapers when the harvesting time has come, and like that of men dividing the plunder they have won. For God will break the chains that binds God's people. And may God bless to our hearts these readings of God's holy word. Let us pray. Mighty God, we have gathered together today to give you thanks for your many blessings and to prepare our hearts, minds, and souls for the celebration of your coming to be with us. As we worship you, Give praise and glory and honor to your holy name. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts truly be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Thank you. 
This is a difficult Sunday for me to preach. As many of you know, I like to have my message reflect the theme of special events going on in our lives and in the life of the church. This Sunday, there are two special themes. For many, this is the completion of the Thanksgiving weekend. The pandemic has changed the way many of us have had to celebrate Thanksgiving this year. We have not been able to be together as a church. Many of us have not been able to be together as families. We are hopeful that this will all end soon, and we need to focus our attention on the future, not on the past. This is also the first Sunday in Advent, and Advent is that special time of year when we begin preparing our hearts, minds, and souls for the celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So my problem is this. What do I talk about today? The title of the message this morning gives you the answer. I'm going to try together, try to tie together Thanksgiving and Advent this morning. In looking for scripture passages this morning, I discovered two separate passages that seemed appropriate for today. One, the prophecy of Isaiah about the coming of the Christ child. The other, the words of our Lord Jesus sharing with his disciples an illustration about the kingdom of heaven. What drew me to these passages, passages was the common word harvest. Isaiah likened the coming of the Lord to the harvest, and Jesus likened the coming of God's kingdom to the harvest. I always think about Thanksgiving coming about the time the harvest is complete. That's not necessarily true this year. This has been a unique year. Due to the very dry conditions, the very favorable harvesting weather, and damage to crops caused by the derecho, the harvest was finished early this year. Living in a rural part of the country, we have a great deal to be thankful for this year. I can tell you that despite the hot, dry weather in the growing season and the significant crop damage from the derecho, area farmers harvested a relatively bountiful crop. People in our community and in our church have experienced the joys of a good harvest. It is interesting that when the prophet Isaiah was telling people about the joy coming to the world in the birth of Jesus, he said their joy would be like the joy at the harvest. I grew up in a rural community. Members of my family farmed, and my son-in-law and his family farmed. Unfortunately, because of my health concerns, I was unable to help with the harvest this year. However, I still remember that great day last year when Pastor Brett joined us for a morning of harvest, riding in the combine, riding in the tractor pulling the grain cart, and even riding in the semi hauling grain to the elevator. We, have all, we all have a great deal to be thankful for. I hope on this Thanksgiving weekend that all of us can experience the great joy of all the blessings our God has shown to us this past year. Knowing the joy and the excitement that comes from the completion of the harvest and a good crop, we need to listen to the words of Isaiah. For the greatest joy of any of us, that any of us will ever experience in our lives, is the joy we receive by having a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why today, as we rejoice and give thanksgiving for all of God's blessings throughout the year. We need to also be preparing for the greatest harvest of all, the harvest when Jesus Christ will come and take us all to the kingdom that has been created for us and promised to all of God's people. We also need to understand and be joyful that the kingdom of God is here with us now not something to look forward to in the future. I hope that all of us, knowing the difficulties this year has brought to so many, will not be overwhelmed by despair, but experience the joy of knowing our God loves us, 
our God is with us and our God is taking care of us. We also need to think about how to get prepared for the coming of the Lord and how to experience that joy in our lives every day. We do this in a special way during Advent, but this is something we should be doing all year long. What I find interesting is that many of the area farmers who are quite pleased about their crops went into the fields with their combines with limited expectations. They did not know what kind of yield was in the field until they experienced it. And we as God's people, expecting the glories of the kingdom of God, are not unlike our farmer friends. We really have no idea of what God's kingdom will be like, even though Jesus tried to illustrate it for us. During this Advent season, we are told to prepare and expect. On this first Sunday of Advent, let me give you some advice. Raise your expectations. I don't care how many Advents you have experienced. It makes no difference how many years you have been living or how many Advents you have celebrated. Make this one different. Expect more growth, more knowledge, more understanding about the love of God shown to us in Jesus Christ. Be like the farmers, giving thanks for a great crop. Give thanks to God for your feeling the touch of God on your life during this special time of the year. There is something that confuses me a little bit about the stories Jesus told about raising a crop. He seemed to say to his followers that all you need to do is plant the seed and watch it grow. In other parables, Jesus talks about finding good soil and tending the crop. This is what the area farmers did this year. They went into those fields and properly cultivated the soil. They went into the fields and applied the proper nutrition the crops needed for sustained growth. They showed faith that they would have good weather and good growing conditions. In this time of Advent, let us as God's people do no less. We need to cultivate our hearts, minds, and souls and care for the seeds of faith that God has planted in every one of us. We need to make certain that we are prepared to respond to the call of God so that our faith can grow to its fullest potential. We also need to apply some fertilizer to our faith. We need to take the time to study God's word. We need to take the time to go to our God in prayer. And we need to have those quiet moments of personal devotion when we let our thoughts be God's thoughts. And then we, like the farmers, need to have faith. We need to be able to say, I have done my preparation, and now I turn my life and all that happens in it over to God. Even though we should not be surprised by the blessings God bestows on us, we will find new joy, new hope, and a peace that we never expected. What should we be doing today? Should we be giving thanks for all the blessings God has bestowed on us? Or should we be preparing ourselves for the celebration of God coming in Jesus Christ to be with us? We should do both. We should be thinking about the joys of the harvest, not only in the terms of what God has done for us, the many blessings God has bestowed on us, but we should also be thinking about the joys of the harvest yet to come, when we will share in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ and take our place in God's eternal kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and most gracious God, today we give you thanks for all the blessings you bestow on us. We thank you for our faith, family, and friends, for our church, for our great nation, for those defending us. We also come, mighty God, with great expectations as we think about preparing to celebrate your coming to be with us. 
Prepare us for your love, your forgiveness, and for your promise of everlasting life. Amen. Come, thou long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever, now thy gracious kingdom bring. By thine own eternal spirit, rule in all thy hearts alone. By thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. And now receive the charge and the benediction. Go out into the world in peace, and in Christ's name be the humble who make others proud, the poor who have riches to share, the weak who help others to be strong, the empty who overflow with loving kindness. And now may the love of God and the treasure of the grace of Christ Jesus and the buoyant health of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Hallelujah. Amen.